All right. Okay, so uh, this is Captain Paul Manugian, and I'm going to be showing you how to tie the purple sea urchin today. And this fly is amazing on snook and tarpon early in the morning or whenever it's cloudy or when you're um, casting into shadows of mangroves. Uh, anytime during the summer months when there's mullet around. If there's no mullet around, this fly, not as good. But if there's mullet around, this fly is going to look like a, a dying or injured mullet um, to the fish. Maybe not to you, but to the fish it, it will. And all right, so the materials we're going to need for it purple and blue foam, purple flashaboo, uh, some green crystal flash. Uh, Magnum Rabbit Zonkers, 30 pound mono, and black 210 denier, and we're gonna be using 4 aught Gamagatsu SL12S hooks. And the reason why we're gonna be using these hooks is because they're really light, light wire, they don't weigh a lot, and they're very sharp, they have a big bend in the hook, and the reason why we don't want a heavier hook is because this is gonna be a top water fly. And with the top water flies, you don't want it to, to be more weight than it has to. So that's why we're using this light hook. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our thread. Where we put this fly on the hook is significant. We wanna make sure that the fly is on the back half of the hook and not anywhere on the, the main shaft or up higher. And the reason being is because for some reason, when you put the fly that far back, this particular one, the fish like to hit it uh, right where the hook is. For some reason, they hit it as if the head was right there, and the hookup ratio is incredible when the fly is right here, pretty much right over the point of the hook, um, instead of having the head up here by the eye. So we're going to start our thread right at the point of the hook, and we're going to wrap maybe 20 wraps. Uh, all right next to each other. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty. Okay. So when you're done, you're gonna be like right behind the gouge of the hook, essentially. Perfect. Okay. And we're gonna use that thread base as a gauge to see where should where should we be putting our fly materials. Okay, the next step is we're going to put our black uh, rabbit strip, and this is supposed to mimic a fish if you're looking at it from upside down or from the top side up. Uh, it's not a broadside type fish. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing this early in the morning or something like that, um, the fish are going to see this moving around. Hopefully they're going to see it from like a straight up below it, or they're going to think that it's sideways or injured or something like that. So. We're gonna take our zonker, we're gonna measure it, and I put my index finger right at the eye of the hook, and I like to measure the zonker strip as if it was in the middle of that thread base, pretty much to in between my thumb and the start of my index finger, right there is where I like to put it. I feel like that's a perfect length. So I removed some of the hair from my strip so it ties in good, I'm gonna put it right on the thread base halfway so that it covers half of the thread base. And I'm not gonna put it on top of the whole thing, just half. Because we wanna build up a taper right there so that when we spin our foam, the foam has something to catch up against. Because if not, you can just slide the foam like off the hook and it's, it's not good. So, uh, there we go. So this fly, I got the idea from Drew Ciccone's Tuscan Bunny. So it's a, it's a variation of that. Um, oh, you know what? I missed a step. First things first, we have to tie in our 30 pound mono. Um, so what we're going to do here, oh, and even before that, we have to make a guard on this so that the rabbit strip, when you, when you pop it, when you strip, make a hard strip so that the rabbit strip doesn't come up forward and get caught in the bend of the hook and then foul your hook. Um, so we're going to use 30 pound mono for that, but first we have to make our hole in the rabbit strip. So what I like to do is put it on there right where it's going to be, 
and then I bend the back end of the rabbit strip so that the fur is just right around the bend of the hook because I don't want it to go any further than that. I want it to wiggle, but I don't want it to wiggle past that point right there because um, then it'll foul. So I make a, a mental note of where that bend is and that bend is where I'm going to put my hole. So I got an idea of where it is and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hook point to make my hole right in the center of the strip. Now you don't want to go in past the barb because it could break the, the rabbit. So I'm just going to go in there, make sure I get a nice, nice hole. And I'm going to take my 30 pound mono and we're using mono instead of fluorocarbon because mono floats and um, fluorocarbon sinks and we don't want this fly to sink. We want it to float. The fish do not see the mono. We're going to be covering it up pretty good. Uh, you might see it, but I'm telling you the fish won't see it. So we're going to put the mono through our rabbit strip in the back there like that. And we're going to tie in our 30 pound mono halfway down our thread base. Really tight wraps. We're not doing sissy wraps here. All our wraps are going to have a purpose and they're going to be tight. So here we go, right down there. Okay, so we got our first part tied in, then we're going to tie in our sonker strip right on top of that, directly on top. Make sure we're not catching any hair when we do that. I find that the rabbit sonker strip will have more action if you take the hair off the top that you're tying in. Okay, so we're going to do that all the way back. Hard wraps, very tight. Okay, and now this part, when we tie in our loop here, we're going to tie the 30 pound mono back onto the top again, but uh, we're going to pull our strip first before we do that. Otherwise, uh, it's going to have this bend in it or sag and you don't want that. So you're going to pull it tight. Then you're going to pull the 30 pound mono until you've got a nice even looking strip there. And what you're going to do is you're going to tie that in. So the way I figured out how to do this and why this loop is so far back is because when I was testing this in the pool initially, uh, it was just fouling up over and over and over again. So I was like, I need to have something farther back that it's not going to foul up on. So now you've got uh, this thing. And what I like to do is kind of make a nice crease right there at the end of your 30 pound mono so that it's not as circular, it's more like aerodynamic. Perfect. And if it bends a little to one side or whatnot, you can always bend the mono. Um, but in the water, this thing is going to look great. So, And that's what counts. Who cares what it looks like on land? The fish aren't, don't live on the land. They live in the water. So here we go. Uh, cut my 30 pound mono off. Now, now we're going to put the flash on. I don't like to use too much flash. I like to use uh, two or three strands and that's it. I find that the fish in, especially tarpon in the back country, um, and I'm talking back country, Everglades National Park, places like that. Um, I just don't like having a lot of flash on them. I feel like they, it spooks them a little bit. So I like to just take two, two or three strands, cut it. I put one, strand on each side essentially. So we're gonna do that. And I like to tie, uh, cut the strands, I mean. I like to cut the strands after I tie it in right around where the end of the 30 pound mono is. So that these strands don't foul either. Okay, so we got those cut, perfect. And we're gonna add one strand of the purple flashaboo. So three strands of the green, one strand of the purple. Really doesn't matter. Uh, this is just the way I like it. I like purple because snook and tarpon love purple. Purple and black, those are the colors. 
something about their eyes and their vision makes them predisposed to see purple really well, especially in that dark, muddy water. All right, so we got that in. Next step is we're going to make a little collar using some of our fur from the Magnum Sonkers. So we're gonna make a dubbing loop. We're gonna make a loop. Uh, well, first things first, we're gonna bring our thread base a little bit far forward to right around where the where we cut the mono. We're gonna make a loop. And we're gonna wrap backwards. And then we're gonna take one of our zonkers. And the reason why we're not using um, the reason why we're not using a metal already pre-made dubbing strip or anything like that is because the metal will make it sink. So we want to use we're going to make our own dubbing loop because what that's going to do is it's going to provide it and make this fly have less weight. So. Um, here we go. So it's best if you have a little clip, but what I'm going to do is just get as much fur into my loop as possible. Use my little dubbing tool here. And if you don't have a dubbing tool, you can order one, or uh, you can go the really crazy way and you could use a pencil and a paper clip and stick a paper clip inside the eraser of the pencil and that will help you, um, it will give you something that you can spin and something that you can pull on this line because you want to get all this fur and give it a cu couple nice spins. Make sure it's all spinning nice and good. Okay, and then we're going to pull that fur back and just start to wrap, wrap up. So we got a nice little fluffy head there. Okay, once we got that all finished, we're gonna lock down that dubbing loop we just made. Okay. So the final part is the head. This is the most important part. So what we're gonna do is fill the head from the foam and the purple. And we're gonna take 20 thin strips of black and seven strips of the purple. I like to have more black than the purple because um, I found that if you do even black and purple, it's not as, um, it looks, it looks a little funky. I think I think uh, black is definitely the predominant color that they're keying in on rather than the purple. The purple just kind of adds a little bit of um, I don't know, just a little bit of sh shadowing or shading to the black so that it looks somewhat natural. And I like to think of these strips as pixels. The thinner you got these strips the thinner the pixels are going to be for the fish. So they're smaller the pixels. So if you're looking at a picture that's very pixelated, uh, you're like, oh, I'm not really sure what that is. But the more pixels you have, the more clear the picture becomes. So I think of these strips as pixels. The thinner the, the strips, the smaller the pixels, and the more the shape will be able to be seen. So, yeah, so I do 20... Uh, black strips, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20. Yep, there you go. Cut those. And I like to have them fairly long. Uh, the longer the better, because that's what's going to keep it floating. Um, and make sure you got all your little strips ready to go here. And I'm going to do seven of the purple ones. 
put those in with the strips that I'm making as well. And the reason why this fly is called the sea urchin is you're going to see in a second. When you're finished, it's going to look like a sea urchin. And then you want to try and make the strips similar size and length to the black one. So, we got our purple ones, we got our black ones, and here we go. So, we're going to stack them all so that they're all even in length, the purple and the black, making sure that they're all separated. Okay. Got them all there on the table. Oh boy. Now, if you have a big deer stacker, a larger size one you can stack these but for right now I'm just gonna try and do it manually okay so we got them all in a big bundle here so here's what we're gonna do put it right over the point of the hook you're gonna do one wrap and you're gonna pull on that wrap until right about where the thread starts to disappear then you're gonna do another wrap Wrap number two, pull it down even more, and you're going to spin it, just like you would spin deer hair. Go, one, two, three, make sure that that's going all the way around. All right, now you got this big ball, sea urchin. You're going to pull this back. You're going to bring your thread up, and then you're going to create a little thread dam so that this thing doesn't just slide forward off your hook. So I get that thread really close, so I'm not wrapping any of the little spaghetti foam strips that I just cut. I'm wrapping that a lot to create that little dam, and what this is doing is it's pushing the foam strips against that little taper that you made at the, right at the beginning of the fly and it's going to keep this foam in place so that it doesn't go forward or doesn't go backwards. I don't like using glue on these flies. I think when the fish comes up behind it and noses it, uh, that is going to be the, t the point where the, that fish is going to be smelling the fly. And if the fly has glue on it, I think they're going to turn off of it. I think the more natural materials you have, the more that fish is going to commit and finally eat that. So once we got our thread dam up, we're going to whip finish. One, two, three. Do it again one more time just to make sure it's secure. Three. Okay. Boom. Okay. Finished with that. And now I like to leave it really big. It looks crazy. Um, the only thing I like to do is cut the bottom and make the bottom flat so that it runs correctly. But I like to leave the top pretty crazy looking. What that's going to do is it's going to push a ton of water. Uh, it's going to make a crazy sound, like a bloop, bloop, craziness in the water. Don't ask me to do that sound again. Um, so now I'm going to be cutting, cutting the bottom just so that it's flush with the hook on the bottom here. pretty much it. There you go. Looks really crazy, but this is one of those flies that looks, you know, it's not Instagram worthy. Somebody who sees this on Instagram, they're gonna be like, what is that? That doesn't look good at all. But it's one of those flies that catches fish, and I can attest to that. 
I'm tying this because I need more of these because the snook and the tarpon have been destroying them. So I like to do a little taper here. I'm like tapering it this way, this way, just a little on the sides. But like I said, you want you want that fluff. Otherwise, it's not going to float. So the more the fluffier, the better. Uh, and that's it. This is the sea urchin, the purple sea urchin fly. So hopefully this helps. Go, you can go catch uh, some big snook and some big tarpon on it. So, all right, that's it.